Okay, congratulations on making it through the last video. I know that one was kind of a mammoth. Um, <clears throat> we are here at the very end of lecture three. So we're going to do one intuition builder. Um, this intuition builder is going to focus on thinking about the RC circuit in the context of voltage. And I hope that it will help uh, solidify some of the concepts that we worked on earlier. Okay, let's jump in. So, um, Let's look at an RC circuit. So <clears throat> I want to think about an RC circuit first in the context of charging and then in the context of discharging. Okay, first in the context of charging and then in the context of discharging. So if I have an RC circuit, let's go ahead and put her in. There we go. Let's slap some numbers on things to make it a little more concrete. So I want to say that I have, boom, a resistor that is a two ohm resistor. And I'm just going to have the capacitance of this uh, this oof, capacitor here be C equals, let's call it ah, 0.3 microfarads. So micro is a micro means 10 to the minus 6. Farad is just the unit of capacitance. Unit of capacitance. So anytime you solve for C capacitance, it'll be in units of farads or, you know, microfarads or whatever. Okay, um, and let's say that the battery has a voltage of five volts. Okay, so I've made a little table, yeah, you can see in the bottom left, for how the voltage across the resistor, the voltage across the capacitor, and the voltage across, or, and, the, uh, and the current through the system will change over time. So, initially, while we're charging, initially, the voltage across the capacitor is zero. It's initially uncharged. It has no charge on it. So over time, current is going to flow to push positive charges onto the upper plate and negative charges onto the lower plate. Okay, but before we get to that, let's back up for one more second. At time t equals zero, because there is no charge across this plate, and because uh, the so capacitance is Q over V, delta V, so the change in voltage across the capacitor is uh, Q over C, capacitance. So because initially there's no charge on the capacitor, there's no voltage across the capacitor either. So all of the voltage that the battery supplies must be taken up by the resistor. So at time t equals zero here, all the voltage is in the resistor. All the voltage is in the resistor. It's all getting eaten up by the resistor. Um, that means that the change in voltage across the resistor, which is negative IR, is negative 5 volts, which yields for me a current of 2.5 amps. Ah, and I've just realized I've made a little error in my chart. Let me fix that real quick. These should be negative. Okay, so let's dial time forward a little bit. Let's dial time forward one half life. So I'm going to say at t equals t one half. Well, now what happens? So the capacitor is going to be halfway to its final value, halfway to its final voltage of 5 volts. So the change in voltage across the capacitor is going to be negative 2.5 volts. It eats up, so to speak. It eats up half the voltage that the battery provides. That means that there's 2.5 volts remaining for the resistor, negative 2.5 volts remaining for the resistor. And again, by Ohm's law, delta V resistor is negative IR. That means that the current is going to be 1.25 amps through the circuit. So current is decreasing over time. We're seeing over time that we get less and less current through our, uh, through our circuit overall. <clears throat> if we dial time forward a little longer to one time constant, T equals tau, now the capacitor is uh, is what is it, like 65-ish percent of the way to, uh, to completion. So the capacitor is at 3.16 volts. The resistor eats the remainder of that, uh, so 1.84 volts. 1.84 plus 3.16 equals 5. And that makes the current a little bit smaller now, 0.92 amps. Finally, if I dial time forward to infinity, if I just go out as far as I can, as t goes to infinity, the capacitor, at this point, is basically charged. It has all of the voltage that the battery is supplying, 5 volts, 
leaving none for the resistor. And so by Ohm's law, the current is zero. Okay, so at that point in time, the charge on the capacitor is maximized, uh, just like we saw in the last lecture video. But the voltage, uh, you know, the voltage is maybe not immediately clear just from that. So here's a quick sketch of how we would show what the voltage is, um, knowing how the charge is related to the voltage on the capacitor. Okay. Uh, the next example is for discharging. So it's pretty much the same circuit, except for this time, what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy the circuit over real quick. Boom. Bring it over here. I'm just going to get rid of the battery. <laughs> I'm going to get rid of the battery. Now at this point, the uh, capacitor is completely charged. So at t equals zero, I'm calling this a, a new time equals zero. At t equals zero, the change in voltage across the capacitor is five volts. Current is going to flow the opposite way now. It's going to flow, uh, what is that, counterclockwise. So at time t equals zero, the capacitor is supplying five volts. Notice it's now positive in our chart, five volts. The resistor is has to take all of that voltage. Uh, and again, using Ohm's law, we find a current of 2.5 amps. After one half-life, we have the same deal. The capacitor is uh, halfway discharged to zero. So the uh, capacitor has 2.5 volts remaining. The resistor has to take all of that. We again see current reduce. Um, and one time constant, same kind of deal. Uh, the resistor eats all of the voltage that the capacitor supplies, a lower value, 1.84 volts. And we have 0.92 amps remaining. And as we go out to infinity, again, current dies down to zero. When current dies down to zero, uh, the resistor uh, voltage is zero. And since the resistor is eating up all of the uh, voltage provided by the capacitor, the capacitor's voltage is also zero at that point. At t equals infinity, as, as time goes to infinity, for the, uh, for the discharging circuit here, the Q the charge on the capacitor goes to zero. I'm trying to tie that back in to the stuff from last video. Okay, so there's our intuition builders. Um, I imagine that this is a bit of a like a jump from the previous stuff on charge. So I'll give some one last comment, which is that um, everything that I have just said basically followed from understanding how charge changes on the capacitor as a function of time along with the knowledge that the charge on a capacitor is equal to the change in voltage across that capacitor times the capacitance to determine uh, how the voltage across the resistor must be changing too. So uh, yeah, that's basically it. We use Kirchhoff's loop rule and these facts about capacitors to determine everything else. And I guess Ohm's law for finding current. <laughs> okay, sweet. Uh, that wraps up this lecture. Hopefully y'all gathered something from it. I hope it proves a good supplement to DLs. Um, if you have questions, please do feel free to message me, um, and we'll address them hopefully in the problem-solving session. Thanks, folks.